like riding All a right, bike. Well, I'm going to, and I haven't done a podcast like this ever, so this is the first time I've ever done this. So, hey, everybody who's decided to join us, you're right. I'm experimenting with you. Yay. (laughs) Guinea pigs. So, um, I'll probably put a better intro on it, but uh, I guess the video people get to see the raw, the raw sausage being made, which I guess is the point. Um, But I... Welcome back to what's going to end up probably being the Paranormal Archaeology podcast. I am here today with Paranormal Baxter and with Karen Stultz now from Monster Talk. And you are both gracing my podcast once again, as you have done in the past. And I truly appreciate it because you always have fabulous stories. Um, You are... So Baxter is a uh, paranormal investigator. No? You know, you could just stop right at Baxter. I got to give you some kind of title. People get confused. (laughs) (laughs) Paranormal. Uh, Yeah, paranormal investigator works. Then you get that whole. I mean, not well, but it works. (laughs) Paranormal is such a great word. It just it can do so much and mean so much and mean nothing at all at the same time. And if people listen to uh, the infamous podcast Monster Talk, you probably already know who Karen Stoltz now is, but she also publishes books and you have a new one out that's been out, I think, for a year now. Uh, yes, almost. Uh, on the offensive, yeah. it's a different topic, though. It is absolutely not paranormal. It's uh, more about racism and sexism and other isms in language. So it's, it's a little different, different it's to this. It's fascinating because that's actually like that. That's what you went to school for was to study language and, and how language was used, correct? That's right. Yes. So, I mean, there, there is some crossover at times. Uh, I've written another book called Language Myths, Mysteries and Magic, which is more about the paranormal aspects of language. So it, it's fun when the, the two things kind of yeah, coincide mean, and cross over. I don't think people under, uh, understand. I don't think people think about um, the roots of language and the, the use of language. I mean, yeah, we're, we're using words, but they, I don't think they understand like... Um, you know, the breakdown of it and all that kind of stuff. So interesting that you've got the two books out and that is your actual field of study where you make all of your millions of dollars, correct? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. In, in my job, <laughs> in academia. <laughs> and, uh, and I am a field archaeologist in CRM. My name is Sarah Head. If you've not ever seen one of our podcasts or one of my podcasts before, um, I do archaeology. And I do it out in the, the woods and the wilds and agricultural fields. And I look for stuff. And it's it's not, it's really not that exciting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish I could be more fun about it. But what we are talking about today is none of these things. <laughs> what we're actually talking about is the Myrtle Plantation. Myrtle's Plantation. Myrtle's okay. Plantation. Yeah. It's, Myrtle's, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jeff Myrtle now, uh, was the one. I, uh, I became, it. It's a I different show. A, <laughs> Maybe not. I, I'm gonna, uh, most I, of what I, you're going to hear from me is made expert, up. So. Well, that's just like the, right. the folklore, right? I, uh, I spent the last hour doing basic Google research on this plantation. And apparently it's a, it's a really nice vacation spot you can go to and hang out at. And they have ghosts. That Lots of was ghosts. what I was picking up on, yeah. Yeah. But if, if you've done an hour's worth of research, then you've probably done as much research as most people who <laughs> uh, think they, they know the, the history and the... I, I looked, you just probably I looked, looked, looked in better maybe. places. Website, yeah. And then I found another website. Yeah, the official website. I was surprised to see... I guess I should oh. not have been, but I was surprised to see that the... The, um, the Myrtle Plantation really leans into their hauntings. They do a lot of tours, at least according to their website. Um, they're very big on booking the private mm-hmm. tour and uh, staying in one of their redone rooms. So they're kind of like a bed and breakfast from what I'm picking up. Yes, yeah. And uh, according yes. to them, the most haunted bed and breakfast in the country um, and, and right. the title that we've heard many right. times, you and I have talked about this before and uh, the, the the most haunted house in the United States in America, 
um, yeah, that, that's a lots of places so, claim to be. So which one of you wants wanted. to tell me the real history? <laughs> and well, I guess we can kind of interweave the folklore and the history. I think it's, it's not really linear to kind of just talk fair. about the history. I think that there's so many, you know, aspects to it. And it doesn't take long really to get through the folklore. Um, to be honest, I mean, there's uh, several ghosts there. We can, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the history and then we can blend yeah, through some of the ghosts be my other and thing. we it's can like, get to as you're telling our me, investigation. You know, the boring, drying stuff, you know, the actual facts behind all of this. Um, what, how did this place land on your radar and why did you guys pack your bags and go stay at this beautiful, lovely plantation out in the middle of the South? I think it's got a very... Yeah. It was a challenge. It was the challenge. Uh, you, you know, can you oh, spend really an that? entire night? There's at the a t-shirt to that, challenge. Uh, to that effect a... as well. Yeah. Their, their claim is that every week there are a number of people who cannot stay the night and who leave. And it's a, a badge of honor, I think, to, uh, to leave. Well, to, or, to, or to spend the night. But yeah, it's on a t-shirt there. <laughs> Well, everybody brags about running away, but yeah, it, and I don't know if it's maybe the, uh, <laughs> yeah, the food. Yeah, yeah. Well, according to their website, uh, they have like they're, 14 they're... eateries that are nearby. Did you go to all 14 of them? How many days did you guys stay? We went to a few. It's, well, yeah, we went I, to a few. We did. I guess and we should was, start by saying fun. that uh, the Metals Plantation is in a town called St. Francisville. So it's about uh, 30 miles away from Baton Rouge and about uh, 100 miles away from New Orleans, thereabouts. And it's a very small town. There isn't really that much there. Uh, I, I think that the most famous place in, in St. Francisville anyway is the Myrtles Plantation. Uh, but it's a bit of a truck stop, really. Um, we thought it was interesting because there are lots of historical family oh, nice. cemeteries around there. And that's something I hadn't seen in the country before. They were all locked and uh, just owned by families who would bury huh. their deceased there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, beautiful garden cemeteries that were really well-maintained, but I hadn't seen anything like that. I think that really kind of stood out to me. Otherwise, it's just a little town in the, the deep south, I guess. Um, but it's, um, yeah, it's a it's a pretty little place to visit, but I don't think people would otherwise really go to St. Francisville. What do you think, Matt? Uh, probably not. I mean, there are some wonderful mansions hidden back in the Spanish moss down there, and uh, it's it's quite beautiful. Uh, we were there in May, and oh, it wow. was very hot, weltering, uh, very mm -hmm. high humidity, and uh, um, a, a amazing amount of of uh, invertebrates and peacocks um, too. Strangely, uh, but uh, I. And, I don't know if they're native uh, yeah, to the area. Really but. There's a historical reason for the peacocks, but that's that's because they're like a, a natural alarm system. So they're they're probably leftovers from the uh, families in the areas. Wow. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. There are a number of plantations uh, I, I thought... that are there in various states of disrepair. Uh, I mean, some of them, they're, they're on, you can get a map that lists all of the local plantations and we try to visit all of them. And some of them were just privately owned uh, some that were really dilapidated uh, and certainly weren't weren't open to the public like the Myrtles is. Yeah. Now, as, as we we go over this history, um, I want to warn you up front that we're we will be interweaving folklore in with and history. So the history may not be entirely accurate until we get to the and, end and before... of the talk then we'll make yeah, the before you guys get into that too uh, much i, I think do that's probably gonna be the best a, way to do a it content warning out to our listeners um we are talking about a plantation we are talking about that particular era in uh, american history so we will be discussing slavery yeah. and some of the unsavory parts of slavery i i don't know if there's a savory part to slavery but there it is um so if that's not your cup of tea might not be your episode but i hope you guys stick around anyway and that's my content warning. Take it away, Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, oh, okay. well, originally the area was called Laurel Grove. And uh, I, it was yes, a I remember general that from the David website. Bradford, also known as Whiskey Dave. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, he was uh, a part of the whole uh, uh, whiskey rebellion that happened mm-hmm. uh, in Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, Karen. Yeah, well, that was just in it. protest of a, a whiskey tax, which had been um, imposed by the federal government. And uh, so, yeah, uh, Whiskey Dave was, I think there was a, uh, uh, they were in search of him and trying to track him down after he'd been involved in that. And so he fled across the country but ended up in Louisiana uh, where he built what was then Laurel Grove and that was about uh, 1796 so this is right in the time of the antebellum south and uh, it was just a a much smaller mansion at the time I think it was only about four or six rooms nowadays it has about 30 rooms and yeah now I do have I do have a photo here (laughs) of of how it looks Um, (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah. So, and and this really goes in well with punk. And yeah, Eddie, like yes, he looks absolutely. Like he really belongs. Uh, and as you can see, it looks so very it, different uh, to nice. uh, if you've seen Googled the place and yeah. seen the pictures of it today. Uh, it's certainly uh, just a lot more simple uh, so when he, it was first he built. Built that place. And he built the location. Yeah. Yeah. Here's closer to now. Okay. Or had it built? He built it. Yes. And uh, yeah. Well, yeah. And he. Um, was there by himself for a number of years, I think for about uh, four years until he was uh, pardoned by President John Adams. And then his uh, wife Elizabeth and the rest of his family came to join him. And so he started a plantation. They mainly grew, I think, indigo and cotton. And he only stayed there, I think, about five years and then sold the place. But uh, it well, but, but but before you did, I, you know, this is kind of an important thing. And Sarah, I, I wanted to ask you with your uh, archaeological background. I sure I'm sure you love it when people uh, say it's built uh, on a native probably American, not wrong. Uh, burial ground. Um, it's got to be one of your one of your favorite phrases ever. Okay. Um, and and that is one of the things here is the uh, Tunica people uh, had a uh, burial mound Ooh. here, and he came in and just kind of wow. plowed it over and threw the bodies willy nilly and built his house. Uh, therefore there was a curse put on the land. Now, of course, I'm curious if everyone was dead who put the curse well, on the land. First, but my first question is, the is was there really a burial the mound there? And um, did you... <laughs> because of the, because those are my questions. Is there so, now, is there so really early on a, in a mound? Were there really bodies? Because not all... Not all native mounds are burial mounds. Absolutely. <laughs> a lot of them are just like palisades not, there was or, the, or, or larger, uh, like, you know, this is where the big house is, you know, kind of thing. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Now, now there was a burial mound, but it was 30 miles. 30 miles well, it was about 30 north miles from the north of that, that area. Um, um, so, it, so we're yeah, already the ruining people this. were never I'm in sorry, that area for everyone who got at all. There so, for a second. No, that, yeah, that, yes. That was quick. And feel free. Feel free to pipe in and just Because my next question was going to be, do the TVs turn on to static channels and do small children hear whispers through said television at any given moment during the day or during the evening? Uh, Not quite. Small children whisper (laughs) through it. So it's it's that little twist. Yeah, we'll certainly get into some of the story soon. But yeah, the, the claim... The, the claim is that uh, Bradford had dug up the bodies and that he'd burned them too. And he so he okay. desecrated okay. the area and the people and done all of these things. But, yeah, so the, the area is actually called Bayou Sarah, interestingly enough, too. And uh, But the, the Tunica people. <laughs> Which is what we'll be saying <laughs> at the end of this episode. <laughs> Bye. My own Bayou. Bayou Sarah. So, oh, no, it's my Bayou now. <laughs> okay, moving on. Forging forward. So uh, then uh, the the property was, I believe, passed on to his daughter, ah. who was also named Sarah, uh, Sarah Matilda. So yeah, lots, lots of Sarahs in this story. Sarah so Matilda. It's, it's, hmm. Yeah, yeah, very. yeah, very much of its time. Uh, and so she, she had married a, a guy known as uh, Judge Clark Woodruff, and they had three children together. So this is where I think we're really starting to merge folklore okay. with the history as well. Uh, but as as the story goes, there was a an enslaved woman who lived on the premises, okay. and her name was Chloe. 
And one one story is that uh, Judge Woodruff was having an affair with her uh, and this was at the time that his wife was pregnant and so it, oh, it was common in those days to uh, have affairs when your wife was pregnant and uh, so they, they were carrying on for some time. In other stories that she was coerced uh, and then in further stories that she was actually in love with him. So you'll, you'll right. read all different kinds of versions of, about this story. Um, true. There's multiple Which is always the hallmark of yeah. something that's 100% story, true. True. Cool. true. <laughs> Indeed. And so uh, as the story goes, one day he decided to call off the affair and she was worried about her safety and security living on the plantation. Was she going to lose her job? Was she going to be cast out of the house to work on the fields? And so she started eavesdropping to listen into his conversations and overheard either a conversation he was having with his wife or a business deal or something like that. And uh, she'd been listening at the door with her left ear and was caught eavesdropping. And so as punishment, they sliced off her oh, left she... ear. Yeah. So from that point on, she started to wear either a turban or a green scarf so that she could cover the the scar on her uh, now, in that area I on her ask, head. Uh, is and... there any documentation of this incident? That. Sorry. Sorry, my bad on this. Yeah. Oh, you really need yeah. to back off. We've, we've ruined everything in the first 10 it's minutes. Been 17. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, 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 we're going to get to that soon. It's a, uh, yeah, this, this story is, is pretty rich oh. actually. And there's a, uh, okay. um, there's, there's a fun conclusion. Yeah, there is the, expensive. So, fabric, I, so just for that time period, just, you know, throwing that out there. Yeah, well, and yeah. that didn't get her. She pulled it I off don't the know. Okay, sorry, I'm ruining the story again. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> so at this point, uh, apparently she baked okay. a cake for the family. So some stories say that it was a. Now, mm -hmm. I, can I interrupt for one second, Karen? Um, I, I need to make sure that everybody knows that. Uh, this this investigation that Karen and I did and all of Karen's fantastic research uh, yes, on this yes, yes, yes. is in Forgot Karen's book, Haunting America. And uh, so the, the Myrtle's Plantation and this section uh, talking about uh, her baking this cake and everything, uh, Karen lovingly titled it down. Oh, and, I forgot about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Chloe <laughs> bakes this cake and uh the cake is laced with the juice from oleander leaves, which are highly poisonous. So in some versions she did this because she was trying to get rid of the judge's wife so that she could supplant her uh, or she was trying to make the family sick so she could then nurse them back to health and uh, just win a place in, in the judge's good books again. So she bakes this cake and ends up killing the wife and two of the children. And so, again, according to the story, uh, she uh, is, is, I think she ad admits what she has As done. As you tend to and do after murdering an entire family. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, you come right out. Uh, it, and, yeah. But then she goes to her fellow enslaved people and she reveals what she's done and thinks that they're going to protect her, but instead they're fearing for their lives. So they end up committing a kind of vigilante justice thing and uh, hang her either from a tree outside, an oak tree outside. Other stories say that uh, she was hanged from a chandelier in the house. In, in fact, I think when Matt and I were there, we were told that she was hanged from a chandelier. Um, and I, I don't believe that particular chandelier was several hundred years old. It was. Been, um, it's been upgraded. It's but, been upgraded uh, a few times. Yeah, a few things have been upgraded, as we'll see. But I think they were just trying to bolster whoa, the idea that that whoa. that ghost oh, is still like hanging heaven. around yeah, in the yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. So they they hang for uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't no, hold a candle. No, no, that's, that's for none sure. None of us do. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> so they hanged her and then they uh, weighed her body down with rocks and threw her into the Mississippi River. Or they threw her into a swamp. That's another version, yeah. yeah. So even though 
she was killed 100%. and sent off the premises. Apparently, she's there's still there. Of, there's a lot, a lot of, of ghosts details still there. in the story that, you know, as, as someone who has a vague understanding of that time period, as in, like, kind of studied it. Um, th- there's a lot of things I'm questioning just from the story alone. See, this is why I can't go on these kind of tours because people will start telling me these stories and they'll be like, but green's an expensive <laughs> color. And that's, it's just all downhill from there. Um, yeah. I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the no, that, did the not same, like same thing happens to us too. I mean, we've been booted I've out. I've learned to just stand there with my arms crossed and, and, and just say nothing. My mom has laughed at me several times now. She's like, "Why do you look like you hate this?" And I'm like, "Well, it's this or I ask questions." Pick. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my other, the other detail that I'm really enjoying <laughs> from the story is that um, th- when she went to the other slaves and and revealed what she had done, I I like the in this story that they're the ones that turned her over because there's a lot of um you can hear in this story a lot of the ideas and sentimentalities of you know the romanticized south in this story you know that whole like oh right like white people you know she's she's part of the affair you know and kind of implying that you know she's a willing participant in this affair Totally, totally. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is right, not how exactly. things like would have been. Some ability to say yes, and she would never have been able to supplant exactly. the wife. And then so. the, the whole concept of like the other slaves are good slaves because they're the ones that like turned the troublemaker over. Or they just like handled the trouble themselves. Right. You know? Yeah. 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 Right. Exactly. Yeah. The yeah. They were the ones that enacted mm-hmm. the justice, and it, it makes so much sense yeah, no, because I mean, like, of the, just, the white. Man, I like the details anyway, that are in the story because it, it, it really paints a picture of the time period that these stories were being formed and the fact that they're continuously passed down, it obviously changing as time goes because it's just a game of telephone. But it is kind of because like the chandelier tree thing. Oh, yeah. I think if I were somebody and I woke up and one of my servants was hanging from a chandelier and the rest of the servants were like, ta-da, I'd be like, yeah, you can all go. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, I, okay. it's even implied that the family hung her yeah, from the chandelier, that, and that doesn't make sense because you wouldn't do that like, in your maybe own the house. Banister? I don't know. Now I'm being morbid, but <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, what if what if right. the waiver I mean, pulls down the whole chandelier? Or then you've got chandelier. that mess I mean, to clean either way, up. You're I mean, tempting it's... fire. I don't know in a wooden house. Are you really wanting to do that? Yeah. It's just oh like yeah. Things. There's things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, but there, also the fact too that it has shades of history. There are that you know what what we do know today about things that took place in that time and and even up to the time of Mm -hmm. segregation with lynchings. And, and so, yeah, it seems to incorporate a lot of elements from that era and also from today. And as we'll see throughout the course of the story, that there are more modern elements which are added to it over time. I mean, like uh, the whole concept of cutting off her ear because she was eavesdropping, you know, it goes back to that idea that, you know, when you, when you view a person as effectively a possession, you're, you're more likely to Mm -hmm. be dismissive of it um so that really comes into that and and that whole like concept that we're taught about slavery you know like oh all they did was you know beat and whip and dismember these people you know day in and day out so of course they just chopped her ear off willy-nilly i mean because then they didn't have to spend the money on you know the doctor the medicine (laughs) keeping her from dying from infection totally totally makes sense yes yep Um, absolutely Anyway, my, my yeah. point is, <laughs> no, it's a it's a tall story. Absolutely, <laughs> it is. It is. And the thing is, is, is the family was incredibly distressed that um, after this happened, you know, when when someone dies like that, you're supposed right. to cover, right. supposedly, right, you're right. supposed to cover the mirrors with a black cloth so the spirits don't get trapped in in the mirror. Because oh man, if I had a nickel for every time that's happened. Yeah. Uh, they were so distressed that the the main mirror in the house they just forgot about. So now that mirror has the handprints of the 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 children and the mother and, and the, does it actually the wife uh, does it actually have handprints trapped in the mirror. So and you can still you can go there to this day. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, here's uh, we can include these in the show notes anyway. These pictures. See this. Um, so is here's it one of the actually mirrors. a handprint, and, and or right is it just the coloration and the silver? And 
Sure, sure. Here's a close up. Yes, here's See. a close up of it. Um, and and it is a handprint. That's not. Uh, and they, works, they've washed okay. it off. They've replaced mm-hmm. the glass supposedly. Yeah. Um, but there, yeah, yeah. yeah, there there are some. Yeah, exactly. There are some issues because uh, if you replace the glass, you're replacing the mirror, and they would no longer be trapped in if it was a different mirror. Uh, but different mirror is also the key to this story because I figure you're going to. My first question it. is how old is the mirror? Anyway. Because is it a silver? Um, and that is. <laughs> That's a good question. Yes. Bingo. Yep. yep. Karen, well, what would you like to elaborate? What I actually wanted to bring up was the, the case that you told me about, Matt, of another place that you'd gone to with a, a mirror that was allegedly hundreds of years old and what you found out about it. Okay. So let's talk about the Bullock Hotel for a moment um, in South we Dakota. We can talk about Deadwood uh, all the damn day. Deadwood. Let's do this. Now, at the top of one of the landings... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Deadwood. And we I had a great time doing an investigation of Deadwood. Uh, they kind of gave us uh, the keys to the town, and it was a lot of fun. But uh, at the top of one of the landings, there is a mirror. It's, a, it's kind of a tall mirror that uh, um, if you, when you're walking up the steps, you can actually see ghost writing in the mirror. And it's quite terrifying. Um, so after hours, I pulled the mirror right. apart. And the mirror, you know. How did you manage you that without getting in mirror. trouble? But, um, uh, the, uh, well, you do it when no one's around. Um, I pulled apart several things that were supposedly antique that were not, but, uh, that was one of them. It was from Walmart and these, the spirit writing oh, was the glue the that held the backing onto the mirror. The squiggles. So when the light hit it, when you were going up the stairs, just right, you would see the squiggly kind of thing and it looked like the letter A and stuff, but no, it was just the glue. This mm-hmm. was squirted on the back. Uh, of the mirror. So, sorry, Deadwood. Is the Bullock Hotel mirror? mirror is not haunted by. Is it an, at least writing. a neat looking mirror? And same thing with this. What's that? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ornate or anything, but uh, it, it's it's fine. I mean, basically, it was uh, sort of a bench that had a kind of a tall mirror on it, and, oh, and the yeah. mirror just happened to be the dimensions of one of those like door mm. mirrors. Yeah. That you get for your apartment when you have no mm-hmm. else nowhere else to put a mirror, right. uh, and it, it fit nicely in the uh, frame, uh, which was yeah. also not an. Well, answer, it's a similar but, uh, story with this mirror. Uh, we didn't get the opportunity to, to take it apart, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, but it's a, a more contemporary mirror. So the, the claim is that that mirror is it, hundreds of years old. And this is the picture old, with the wallpaper. And that, that's the actual mirror. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. This is the end. Yeah, there's the, the handprint is right there. Now, the funny thing about this is I had a mirror uh, that I got from, of all places, uh, Walmart that, uh, no, no, I'm lying. I got it from, uh, at the time it was called <laughs> McFrugal's and it became okay. Big Lots. Um, so it was a very, very inexpensive place. And, and I had this mirror for a long time. I, I was going to um, say, that's a And really then I, I recently threw it out because it was a piece of garbage, really. But that's mirror. this mirror. And that's just judging from the picture. I mean, it, well, I'm yeah, they're up on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there were a lot of antiques in mm. the house, or alleged antiques, and we were told this is solid gold, uh, and it absolutely wasn't. I mean, we're, we're talking about just being spray painted with uh, paint from, I guess, Walmart or, or somewhere else. Uh, but yeah, certainly this mirror is just more contemporary dating back i think to the the 1970s there have been a lot of families that have lived in this house over the the centuries um but it seems like the marks there i mean there are a number of theories we don't know exactly what happens but i think positing theories uh of natural explanations is more uh plausible than the idea that the there are spirits caught in the mirror but it seems like the the marks could be caused by some kind of distressing it could they could be caused by uh, humidity or, uh, I guess, mishandling. Of- or if you want to, yeah, if you, if you want to do this yourself, uh, if you have a mirror that you'd like to do this, make sure you get nice and grimy and sweaty. Which is easy in Louisiana. And just touch the yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. Easy in Louisiana. You touch the back of the mirror uh, where the, the, you know, the silvering yeah. is and the oils in your hand will create that. It's not hard to do at all. In fact, uh, you can get pre-distressed mirrors oh, it's, uh, and then on, those uh, are cheaply done anywhere. i mean if that was a real yeah. mirror that had real silvering real silvering not just like that weird paint shit that the uh, stuff that they use these days um 
Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, the humidity would ruin it. I mean, but it'd be really, really foggy and really, really pocky and really, really hard to see in general. Like, and that I'm, I know you yeah. guys keep telling me that's a handprint, but that doesn't look like a handprint to me. <laughs> Well, it's like I said, this this closer up one. You a little bit. A little bit more. It, it could even be four, could even be some pyridolia I too. That, I get that uh, that but, could be a palm some print, kind of yeah yeah because yeah. there's yeah. like the palm. So where are the rest of the handprints? Because yeah, isn't it supposed to be the woman here. and the children? So it's that's a good point. Yeah, and that's that's where the pyridolia really comes in. Is that you have to kind of look around and really try to find them. Uh, and, and you can pull up photos of this mirror all over Google Images and, and get yeah. real good looks at everything. And, and it's kind of hard to find well, Certainly for people who believe but, uh, and they go there and they take pictures of the mirror or with the mirror, they end up seeing images in the pareidolia and, well, and depending and on the resolution their, of your camera, it's going to make the connections themselves. Worse. You know. Yeah. And I, I just think the older yeah. it gets, too, the, the more kind of cruddy it looks and... Um, yeah, but that's that's one of the hauntings, and it's claimed that there, different sources will say that there are either ten ghosts at the Myrtles, or twenty, or thirty, or even more. But there were ten ten murders, correct? Yeah, that, the, the uh, claim that is claim? that there have been multiple murders and um, so, lots so of deaths this, as well. And, me and this is the house um, that American Horror Stories based off. Of. <laughs> okay, okay, clearing that up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, again, we could just get into spoilers at this point. And oh, I was uh, making I a joke. Maybe a bit Did they further along? We can can go into those. Well, oh. some kind of some truth to it. <laughs> well, you know, I well, I have to say, you know, uh, of that that whole theory sure. that a house is only as haunted as the number mm. of deaths that occurred there uh, is a strange one because one of the places I investigated was mm. Denver's Children's Hospital. Fair. And over the years, there's been about twenty thousand deaths there. And uh, uh, it's no more haunted than. Uh, well, that Arnold's. makes me think of uh, Waverly Hills so. Sanitarium too in Kentucky, and. Yeah, but there's there's well, six hundred. Yeah, people we should every 10 do seconds, a show uh, on that separately. That but there's the claim is that about sixty five thousand people yeah. uh, died there. In ac- in actual fact, it was probably about ten percent or less than that. Um, but I mean, that place really only became haunted yeah, of late. You were. You were- Maybe the last. That's the one you wrote about in your years. book, and you were talking about how they had an actual, actually, pretty good success rate in treating. Um, what was it? TB. They were treating. TB? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, tuberculosis. Yeah, for for the time, yes. um, and uh, I think, uh, um, it, yeah, it was much. The the death rate was much lower than is uh, purported. You know, I mean, they they make it seem like there was a death there every minute or something that the place was open, and that's just not true. But, uh, yeah, certainly it's just common. You, you take a, a an old house that has some history uh, and right. suddenly it's right, haunted. Right, right. If you have uh, any, any deaths that have taken place there, which are obviously going to happen over the course of time with a, a historical house like this, and suddenly it's haunted. But uh, I think we should probably talk about some of the claims. Yeah, tell me. Tell me about the there. I mean, it me really covers the, the gamut. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> that's well, fair, you that's had fair. the three the three family members that yeah. were murdered by the slave. That's you had the slave, uh, mm-hmm. the enslaved. Now, uh, are those woman, the first Chloe recorded murdered. murders at um, the place? And then we had. Uh, uh, okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And then over time, there was a, another young girl who, uh, from uh, maybe about a hundred years on, I think her name was Kate. And uh, she was sick, I think, with yellow fever. And so they brought in a, a voodoo as priestess, you as you do, to to cure her. And the little girl sadly died. And yeah. so then they uh, murdered as the voodoo priestess, do? basically, in, in the house because, yeah, she didn't succeed. Uh, and then there's the story of, uh, it was his name, William Winter. William and Winter, he, yeah. it's a, this is a strange story, but it was uh, a, an occupant of the house and he was an attorney and it said, and he was that's actually Sunday the school. truth. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> which I think is one of the funniest part of it is teaching Sunday school uh, and, being in the, and, and actually he was. Um, no, no, they, that, they that was the truth. Up. But uh, so in the, the story, someone just rapped on the door and he went and answered the door and uh, it was, he someone had called for an attorney. And uh, so when he opened the door, he was basically shot and he came back in and valiantly tried to to survive, uh, went up a, a stairwell up to the 17th step and his wife caught him in her arms as this he This was on the website that I read. So, the, yeah, because he was like, he val valiantly died or tried, heroically died in his wife's arms. And I'm like, How? I mean, I don't disbelieve that that could happen, but I don't believe it happened. <laughs> well, yeah. He he died right where he fell. When they shot him, he fell and he died. So he did not go up the 17th step. But everybody seems to think that they're Going seeing the him relive his death and they, every yeah, night. Very appropriately have a stairs. kind of red carpet on the stairwell too, which looks like blood. And there are stains everywhere on the, the rugs throughout the house. So, and so you know, he was a murderer and he was a murderer. Why him reenact his death every night? What, what are they... What's happening that they think they're seeing? Is there like a shadow, or are they hearing noises? Oh, they're they're, they're seeing this this you know, they're they're seeing mm -hmm. a guy climbing up the stairs. Is it um, a car driving yeah, by? Yeah, he's, he's absolutely. Uh... Well, there there is a lot of traffic going past the place, so it really could be lots of different things. And I, I guess we'll get into that soon too when we talk about our investigation and, yeah. and what we experienced. But uh, I think a lot of people go there and they're true believers and they're expecting to have uh, an experience and to see a ghost materialize. And so through one way or another, yeah. they experience that. But there are always lots of people around there and lots of well, noise. I mean, you yeah, I mean, you got to look at it this way. Uh, the the Smithsonian actually has them registered not know the on their list of most now haunted I must houses. Find it. Um, and you know, so obviously, <laughs> oh. you, you you won't find it. <laughs> well, good luck. Oh, okay. So I'm because there isn't one. Right. It doesn't oh, exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, we, we, we have a, we have a quote from yeah, actually Smithsonian about contacted that. But, them. Uh, um, but uh, I think we should kind of run through some more of the activity because I mean, there is just so much of it um, because it said that all of these children died there. People claim that they hear kids crying, babies crying, kids singing nursery rhymes. Playing in the uh, yard. That, uh, a lot of people will say that they feel like their clothes that is really are tugged on common. that feeling that, that you a get really when a common thing that i hear from a lot yes. of haunted areas is like someone has the, you'll feel people tugging on your clothes or pulling at your hair and it's like yeah right, and i've had things like that happen i mean it can just be uh, it can be a breeze that comes in and moves your clothing or it can i don't, I don't think people also understand that twig you, you have snags oh, on your body pant leg. Hair and sometimes you will feel a hair so we, we were talking about um, people feeling tugging on their clothes being very common in um, haunted uh, experiences, you know, the tugging of the hair, the pulling on the clothes, that kind of stuff. And it could be anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it, it's I don't know why you would immediately jump to the conclusion right. that it's a ghost because it could just really be so many other different things. But this place just uh, encompasses the, the gamut of, paranormal activity uh there are lots of statues around the estate and uh apparently those uh statues will weep tears or they might come to life and move around the grounds at night and the same thing is said of a lot of portraits and paintings around the house that uh the uh the people in the, the portraits will actually leave the the paintings at night and wander around yeah, the house also uh, or move as you're walking up them you know they just like reconnect to another quarter <laughs> yeah. altogether is there a three-headed dog i haven't heard that one yeah they they that's <laughs> yeah the, there's a three-headed <laughs> probably dog the there. only one i um, haven't heard <laughs> well the the thing is is that uh uh, it's, it's a lot of excuses is is what, what, it, it what? really is uh it's like yeah well uh, i'll give you an example there's one where a confederate soldier 
was was killed and he came stumbling in and, and fell uh, across the uh, the threshold and there's a blood stain that won't be cleaned up but if you're walking through there and you trip you're tripping over his ghost so it's kind of become anywhere you trip in the oh, house somebody died there, and also and you're i don't have to clean over the their carpet. ghost um and I, i've seen that with yeah i've seen that with paranormal investigators that are tv show trained um <laughs> that if they slip and trip or, or something happens yeah. then it goes pushed mm-hmm. them trip them i mean it's it's always you know if they knock something off a counter it was thrown at them if they uh, hear so someone calling their kind of name then on. it's a ghost yes i yeah, like i yeah. like when they turn the static um, up so not loud. like uh jason get out of frame <laughs> like, did you hear yes. that no because there wasn't anything okay man whatever we'll just get we're just keep going just keep going yeah but there are certainly yes. a lot of uh, have... alleged sightings of Chloe as well, and that well, there are some mischievous ghosts too uh, that will steal people's possessions. In particular, one steals soap. I don't know exactly. I mean, why it's hard to get a good bar soap. of soap in the afterlife. Let's just in in those uh, yeah yeah yeah. I mean, in Louisiana, yeah. in the afterlife. currently not known for the ghost soap. I mean. I can make it great. I can make there it great. Yeah, and then that is, uh, that is a true this. statement. But, um, so you, you were, you were mentioning Chloe. Were, the, were those the pictures you mm-hmm. were showing me before we started recording were, were of Chloe? How do they know it's Chloe? Do we just, yes. Well, aren't well there who like else could it be? Ghosts here. Um, yeah, but none of them yeah, are she's, Chloe. She's uh, only one the of them is Chloe. Most infamous so, so here's ghost. and she's wearing a turban oh, or a scarf. That's, that's how they know. Okay. Okay. So you no, so, have to move so the, the let pumpkin me, head. Let me I'm always a him bobble him guy. To oh, I love him even more now. <laughs> so, um, uh-huh. right here now, this picture was taken for uh, in, insurance. So they purposes. say, and that was about 1991. They, they, they sent it off 1992. To, yeah, right in that area. They they took this picture and they sent it off to the insurance company and they sent it back and said, no, this picture is no good because there's a true. person in the picture. You cannot that have people true. in the picture when you send it to insurance companies. Um, so there's a person in there, that right there. Um, it, well, it's Chloe because there's no one in the picture. You know, when she, when, when the owner took the picture, was this, uh, was this, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the owner. Yeah, at that this would time. be, I think, Tita Moss. Why, why is the John and Tita, Tita Moss? Moss. Yes. Okay. Well, because but, it needs to And it obscures old. any detail. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is like the only one. This is actually a, from a I was wondering if I was orb. seeing oh, an yeah. orb or right. just like a well. bump yeah. in the lawn. Yeah. Okay. Now that's that's an orb. Now here's the interesting thing. I found this photo. Now this one right. is also has Chloe right. in it. Uh, no orb, mm-hmm. so it's a different yeah. different photo. angle. It's also a different, slightly different angle. It, it's mm-hmm. in color, uh, but everything else is identical in the picture. Uh, but it's not the same picture. So what that tells me is there was yeah, actually there's, there's something, over something there. yeah. leaning against the wall. There was something that was casting a shadow. <laughs> Um, but there's something over there that's not a person. But once you really get it into, because I think this was actually taken from a newspaper article when they, that's they why gave it to a newspaper. Like and of course, when you put it through that process of a half tone, uh, you know, you're, you're cut yeah. down to a very bad gray it's scale. Kind of a picture of a picture um, of yeah, a picture, yeah. and in, in a sense, so it's it's really bad quality now. Uh, when but you that look at it, but, the uh, um, so e- that explains the artifact. Exactly. So like yeah. I said, when you put this one up, you can still see it there. It doesn't look quite as convincing, but of course at the same time, yeah. it's, it's smaller in the scheme of things. Um, but it's still there. If it was a ghost and the orb is gone, well then the ghost should I be mean, gone. I mean, if moon orbs or have logic to um, them, are, are there rules for orbs? Ooh, I don't know. Think. Sometimes there are, sometimes there aren't. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. And here's a picture we took when we were there. And as you can see, right. there's still something there. Uh, yeah. It happens to be Karen. <laughs> now, yeah. how do we know this but, is Chloe? Um, I mean, we know this is Karen this time, but how do we know it's <laughs> yeah, Chloe yeah. and the other two? Yeah, this. Oh, yeah, it's not. It's Karen. Well, because as you she can is. see in this picture, she's wearing a turban. It's and, obviously yeah, again, green. That's- Paridolia. We just we just yeah, established like, this is a black. Yeah, it and looks white like uh, it must be a female. 
you know, <laughs> you, you're in luck. Established yeah, yeah, yeah. black and white. <laughs> Screwing everything up. All oh, right, here it is in color. Look at the it green. It looks blue to me, and I don't that see a turban, turban that she's yeah, wearing. Every, every, all the moss and everything looks green in Louisiana. Yeah. But, <laughs> but so, really, yeah. it could could so, be many yeah, different things. It's, I it's mean, it really does look like a, a shadow from many angles too. But their claim is that either the Smithsonian Institute or MIT or the FBI conducted uh, shadow density mm -hmm. testing or analysis or something uh, on the picture to to prove that it, it wasn't faked or uh, enhanced I mean, in I'm any way. I mean, I'm not doubting. And it doesn't. Okay. Because, um, I mean, it looks enhanced. Starts, I'm not denying that that is not a real shadow. I, I believe that that is a real shadow. Um, this shadow density thing, I've never heard of the Smithsonian doing it. Um, MIT, maybe? I don't know anything about MIT. And, you know, the FBI does everything, so sure, why not? Um, doesn't seem to be a thing. Doesn't seem to and exist. They, they right. usually well, concern themselves Mulder. with ghosts. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but I mean, right. I play well, I play a lot of I Fallout want to 76, believe. and honestly, it looks like that's where like the pop machine is hidden, where I can go and get the magic pop that heals me. <laughs> so it doesn't look like a person. Is my point? <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Well, let let me let me really quickly here see if I can. Um, yeah, I mean, when you guys were there, did you go over here. to that area well, take and take a, a picture of the airy? Absolutely. Okay, sweet. Absolutely. Yep, and and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put one up here in just a moment, so you can kind of see. But also, well, the uh, thing is, is that now right. there's nothing there, you know, now. But yeah, I mean, it's this <laughs> kind of little breezeway so, area, is what they call it. That's between between the yeah. general see, so, store so and the Chloe house. would have been yeah, Chloe would have been standing right here. Um, cause as you can see, there's a pillar yep. right here. Uh, but, but if you look right yeah, here, you can yeah. see that there is stuff there kind of piled there. up that isn't there. here. It's not in this picture. So they had stuff piled up there. So is it a shadow Storage or is it area? the edge I mean, it, of it looks what like was junk ever to me. piled I, I don't up there? See a person. Um, I can which, see why you might think it's a person, but. Right. If this is the only thing you're looking at. But I'm also but not need to understanding look at how too. I know it's Chloe. You know, because you're missing that. I keep coming back to that. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you know, can you? Yeah, I guess. Can you just let it go? I, know, I get in trouble for uh, asking questions man. all the time. Well, I think we, we should discuss Chloe yeah. a little bit more. Or... Because you guys I were hinting at stuff this, at the beginning idea. of this um, that I was getting in trouble for asking questions about. So I, I have a a sinking yeah. suspicion that Chloe may not be as authentic as she appears. Yeah. Well, if you go back in time, Chloe was actually uh, Cleo. Oh, okay. So her name has changed over the years. And if you, yeah, yeah. And uh, her position in life had also changed too, from being an enslaved person to being a governess, an au pair, or maybe even a, a, a maid in the house. Um, yeah, it seems like uh, one story claims that uh, she was Canadian, so not African American, but Canadian or French. French. And French. Uh, again, you have these discrepancies in the stories that sometimes she was wearing a scarf, or it might have been a turban. Um, well, let's 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 back up just for a moment because we have to talk about this this insurance mm -hmm. picture uh, because this in picture this picture is kept under lock and key. We were told by the tour guide. Uh, that this picture is kept under lock and key, and it's actually uh, uh, what was it in the? Uh, what, it was in a library. Is it the that, Smithsonian uh, it was Library? Being held. Um, <laughs> no, I'm trying to. <laughs> it was actually in the. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the name of the library. Yeah, nearby. West Feliciana Parish Library. So the the claim yes. is when we were there, when we did a tour, we spoke with a young girl who was conducting the tour, and she said that uh, yeah, there there was proof. Not only was this photograph photograph kept there in their archives uh but there was also a diary uh the diary of judge woodruff and in that diary he had written about his love for chloe and his relationship with her and you know i don't know i, I just something struck me as strange that a man of that stature would have had a, a diary in the first place 
uh, personal diary talking about his experiences. Um, and diaries uh, were a bit girly. I don't know. Common, actually, well, yeah, I mean, a lot they of, especially journals. a lot of aristocrats would keep um, diaries because, of course, everything they have to say is important. Um, but it, it, <laughs> but it, it wasn't like a, you know, like a, a journaling journal. It True. was kind of like today I went to the store and I talked with so and so about, you know, such and such a thing right. because it's like, it's more of a, a probably not planner kind of a thing is what I think the word I'm looking for. But probably not going to be disclosing undying love well, for an enslaved woman. I don't know. Probably not. But but here was the main flaw in this tour guide's um, approach. Uh, she did not think anybody was actually going to go. So the library, to that library is a real and place. Find out, and we did. Yeah. Well, okay. she. She didn't say which library. Place. She just said so was it was Debbie. the the local uh, library, okay, okay. and uh, so yeah, we we uh, did some research and, and and found the local library. I mean, it was the only library in the area, right. so it was clearly the one that she was talking about. And we went and spoke with uh, the archivist there. Her name's Debbie. Oh. Hi, Debbie. And she's <laughs> and she she was extremely helpful, but she said uh, there is absolutely no. Uh, diary that we have. We don't have a photograph from the Myrtles. Uh, so she disproved everything that we were told. So I, I think Matt's right. It's just a matter of um, these tour guides not thinking that someone is going to do any research. They're just going to accept at yeah, face just, value you know. that this diary exists, this photograph exists. Um, so, And unfortunately, most right. of the time, that's exactly what happens. You know, you walk away because this person's exactly. speaking from a sort of exactly. this place of authority exactly. and clearly... you just accept it at face value. Yeah, but that's the same thing with the uh, the, the wife and children. Uh, they did die kind <laughs> yes. of, I mean, eventually. His, um, his uh, Judge Woodruff's wife, Sarah, died and um, his, his daughter, um, uh, Cornelia, they died, I think, a year apart. And there was a, an outbreak of yellow fever that year they, in 1823. Did they forget to get the voodoo priest to come fix it? Is that, is that what happened? Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that was later on. So <laughs> they, they couldn't be saved by voodoo yeah. at the time. But then the, the son died. So it wasn't the two girls who died. It was the, uh, the son, James. He died the following year of yellow fever wow. as well. And the third child, Mary, uh, she went on to live, I think, until the 1870s, lived a long life. Oh, wow. For her. No, she was yeah. 71 years old, yeah. So eventually it caught I mean, up to it's, her. It's, the it's only known for being a slow her death, so And uh, took her down. Yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> and very yeah. painful and slow. <laughs> as, as so there, there is a... <laughs> yeah, much like yeah. the story like the of the tour guide. So now. there is a record of the uh, the, the existence for the, the wife and the children and that two of them did die. However, there is absolutely no record whatsoever of a Chloe, a Cleo... Absolutely nothing. So there's no no evidence for so her. So here's existence. my next question that you may or may not actually be able to answer. Um, again, since we are talking about slavery, um, slaves were considered property, and mm -hmm. property would be accounted for when bought and sold and bought. Yeah, if you're are they were they part of the the plantation when the plantation was sold? Were they passed on in a will? I mean, they they had to be accounted mm -hmm. for somehow. They were considered property and wealth. So did this guy even actually own slaves? Okay. So. Well, I, yeah, I don't actually, I don't know about that. I mean, it was su supposedly an indigo and, and cotton plantation. No, but that was, but, that was before. Well, that yeah. Was I'm before saying in the, the days to... of uh, the Bradford, but I'm not too sure in, in when judge Woodruff right. was there. And uh, I, I don't, really know um i mean they might you know, have whether... belonged to sarah but as soon as she got married i believe her property would have transferred to the judge so if he outlived them or passed it on to mary there should be some kind of accounting of what he passed on now this is a not everybody yeah, no, knows I believe that it, uh, you know and <laughs> i don't want to second that. guess you not can. everybody knows how to look these kind of documents up so it's, it's not that big of a deal Oh well, r right, and and I don't want to second guess Karen, but I want to trust in Karen that uh, when she did the original research, she did find that they did not have slaves during the Woodruff. Yeah, well, I, I think the property was terribly large um, at that point too, and with every uh, generation that took over or the next family that was handed down to, the land was kind of chopped up 
uh, and and sold off. But the, I mean, as Sarah's saying, I've come across records in the past of enslaved people who had escaped and and there'd be newspaper advertisements you know where is this person or this person was found and uh so yeah i mean there there is documentation for this kind of thing yeah. but nothing <clears throat> excuse me nothing that i've come across uh to attest to her existence but if you go back to uh books i think uh, the the first mention of cleo that i came across was a book from the 1940s uh in which she was talked about as being a governess so, but even then, we're talking about folklore. We're not talking about um, any proof of an actual person. This is, oh, it's told that there was a governess who lived on the premises. But we're we're talking about the 20th century at this point. Um, so, you know, not the uh, 19th century, certainly right. not the 18th right, right, century. Right, right. See, and that's... The- and, uh, <laughs> Go ahead. And I was like, when that... Oh, she, and she absolutely ahead, changes... Um, you know, in a accordance with when she's talked about. Uh, I mean, if she's her, the descriptions of her change as well. In some uh, uh, writings, she's talked about as being this overweight older lady, and then with then in other jaw. descriptions, she's referred to specific. as this beautiful young woman. Um, so yeah, she she keeps changing, and it really seems dependent upon the source and the the era that they're referring to. Well, yeah, and, and here's the, another thing that it's just hard to argue with. Most of these uh, real descriptions, most of these stories with the intense detail um, are revealed by psychics. Oh, well, that explains that. So what are you going to do? Okay. I'm, yeah. just, like, argue I'm that. just like, these are really specific details about how this person is supposed to like a square jaw and like kind of hefty i mean it, it's not like you know yeah she's but it, more like a kind of mammy caricature in those examples and then at other times you know she's more this kind of uh yeah this this sexy mistress right, and right. so she just keeps changing in, in every account bit, i bet i bet but, if you go on multiple occasions and have multiple yeah. guides you probably will get multiple stories i've I've totally had that happen. Yep. Uh, I mean, I've gone to some places so many times that uh, I'll be, I'll know the stories and I'll be telling them to the tour guides and, oh, well, I was told this. And so you certainly hear conflicting yeah, stories. Yeah. And, I do wonder about and, that. Uh, then you, yeah, absolutely. The story, as you say, it's a telephone game. It just keeps changing. Uh, but a lot of the stories do go back to the 1980s and there was a family who lived there, the, um, the Myers, James and Kermes. James and Francis, well, yeah. Her, I think her maiden name was uh, Kameen. And Kermine, she wrote a book yeah. called The Myrtle's Plantation, The True Story. So uh, we know that anything that's yes. true story isn't. Uh, but The True Story of America's Most Haunted House. And so this... You know, we had some confusion about this because um, I had originally thought the book was written in the 80s, but it, it wasn't. It's about her time there in the 80s. Oh, so this is but it was written book. in 2002. Um yeah, it's a, it's a recent book, but the, it it really goes overboard by stealing from oh The Exorcist. Oh, and yeah. Anna I mean, she's, and, she's talking you know, about beds floating into the air, and she's talking about poltergeist activity and uh, glasses smashing and things moving across the room, and, uh, and she involves the Ku Klux Klan as well. I mean, everything everything comes into to her story, and I think that things really took off from there. It seems like uh, some stories go back to the 1950s. There was an owner called Marjorie Munson, and she said she saw some weird things there, there but she doesn't go into much really detail. Marjorie Munson? Uh, okay. Mar- Marjorie Munson. Well, we hope so. so Marjorie. Marjorie, sorry, my um, Marjorie, yeah. And uh, so she, I think 1940s, 1950s is, is when these stories started coming out, and then they evolve in the 1960s uh, to – talk about the kind of phenomena that that people were interested in at the time and then yeah. by the the 2000s we're talking about 1980s stuff and as matt says influences from poltergeist and the exorcist uh, i think there's something interesting too is that uh francis writes in the book and i've read sections of it in the past she writes about um how her husband had cheated on her repeatedly with uh, i think a, a maid or a cleaner in the house and uh neighbors and other people so she blames chloe oh and judge woodruff 
Oh, oh that's would have possessed that, him. That's, yeah. that's always so he, he was basically reliving mm-hmm. the experiences of the judge there, by having these affairs. Aren't there several movies with that what are you plot do? line? <laughs> yeah, she's just she's just picked yeah. yes, there stories are. from multiple movies. That's that's really all that she's done here. Well, and and it's it's funny because the the current owners really downplay that we don't oh, wow. sell that book in our gift shop kind of thing, and Not yet all the, the stories told on the tour yeah. are. Like, but I think book. because like there was a falling includes, out there. So. Yeah, I think so. But yeah. uh, I mean, they certainly do. The the current owners really do capitalize on the stories uh, to the point where when Matt and I went there to do our investigation, uh, I just got talking to the owner at some point and. Uh, I mentioned that I was a journalist and that I was doing some research into the the property and looking into the history and the folklore. And suddenly we were upgraded to a nicer room. So we there are lots of uh, little, I guess, cabins on oh. the premises. Yeah, we got into this oh, like this kind of famous room. Like here, yes, uh, we, we got pretty. stuck. Into. Yes, and so we we were moved from this little tiny shabby cabin uh, to the actual main house. I want, we, we I want to stay, stay in the cabin, though. Because well, we, you, you don't no, you because don't. there's a yeah nasty old bar no. in like, the rooms no, and no. You don't. <laughs> no. It 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 was uh, it, yeah. it was fine. Well, I mean, one of the things that stands out to Matt and I is the the sound of frogs outside and crickets, uh, deafening, absolutely deafening, and traffic going past. Well. It, it, we, you, you got the challenge of, you know, can you survive an entire night? We, we were so tempted because oh, no. there was a holiday in right down the road. And we were like, oh, man, yeah. let's yeah, We've seen enough. Go, you know, down there. <laughs> but it was, yeah, the, the, the crickets, the frogs, the traffic, and yes. the ghost So hunters. that's what we're going to get into now. So uh, we get moved into the main house. <laughs> okay. We get moved into the main house. So I think they thought yeah. I was going to write some kind of glowing review of the place and talk about all of the – the hauntings, but it was really it cool is. to be in the house, being able to explore the place. Uh, I mean, there's not much in there that, I mean, I mean, there's nothing in there that, that dates back to the 18th century. I mean, come on. Um, I think. Yeah. I mean, when you're on the tour, oh, this piece is haunted and this it, piece is haunted and this piece is haunted. This is an 18th and century and urn. And I mean, original. absolutely nothing is, is original. I mean, or that's period. cool, but I don't know. I don't think that's an antique. No, I, yeah, it looks like it looks no. I don't know. modern, actually. Kind of, yeah, I don't know. It looks kind of to me like it could be 1940s or 1950s, but a lot of stuff in there seemed to be like it was definitely 20th century, kind of you know mid, mid to late 20th century yeah. um, furniture. And uh, but anyway, I, I think that the the one of the most memorable things about staying in the house, as Matt said, was the the ghost hunters. We didn't get any sleep because. Throughout the night, they were doing their investigations, rattling doors, walking around with recorders, okay. recording EVPs. See, now, right outside okay. of, of our door was kind of this little area. Okay. And uh, and and right kind of like uh, o- uh-huh. over here, there's a stair stairway that comes up. Okay. And then over here was our, our door. Uh, and they were just... <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, talking into their tape recorders and asking you, those questions. Did you at any point they were go up to the crack of the door and go, um, go away? <laughs> Something even no, better happened. I, I opened the door. Oh, no. <laughs> I opened the door and stuck my face out. And I was met with a flashlight into my face. My face was pasty white and bright. And the guy goes, oh, are you dead? Um, and I'm not joking. He actually said that to With me. With a Louisiana and accent, yeah. And I went, yeah. Hadn't, yeah. I'm like, I hadn't really thought about it. And awesome. then I closed the door. Um, <laughs> and it scared the, the crap out of it. It got quiet for quite reversed. a long time after that. But uh, That's fair. That's fair. I guess it was just the shock of seeing me and then having my face oh, be so Most ridiculous question I've ever heard. <laughs> when people say there are no stupid questions, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> we've, we've found there one. sometimes yeah. are stupid but questions. that's and then he he stumped me for a moment i was like ah, oh, but, I don't know. I but that was the it. the um, evening i mean we didn't and we didn't get to sleep i think until maybe about five or six in the morning because there were people knocking on the doors and knocking on the walls okay, and so I uh, once again just have to ask questions and 
<laughs> Sorry. Hey, this is my job. Um, what is, is my understanding when you do a ghost hunt, you don't want other people in the building with you because you don't want the interference of non ghosts in your recording equipment. So did they just not know you were there or did they not care? And then doesn't that then invalidate any findings they might oh. have had? No, see, you're, you're, you're missing <laughs> definitions here. The thing is, is if you're a paranormal investigator, you consider yourself oh, yeah. to be more scientific about things. Uh, if you're investigating the paranormal, uh, you're probably not that scientific. But the bottom line is, is you, you, you paste that on yourself. I am scientific because I am a paranormal <laughs> investigator. A ghost hunter is a very mm -hmm. social thing. I mean, That's where you go and you house, scare the crap it. out of no, yourself. No, no, you, you're missing some parts. You, you go to the restaurant it's, first it's, and you, you drink too much thing. and then look thing. for spirits on spirits. And <laughs> that's pretty much it's, how it it's goes. It's easier to yes. find but, them uh, that way, I mean. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yes. these, these people were just having a lot of fun. Uh, and I believe that uh, there was a couple in the room next to us who left and didn't stay the night as well, I think. They that was news the next morning and people you go to uh, because it's a B and B they do have breakfast in the general store area and I think it was like biscuits and grits and Wait, stuff. That's the general store area. And no, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, no. But I do want to point something out. I want to point something out here. As you can okay. say, we're, we're, this is the local grocery store. We're in the okay. the diapers and baby needs aisle. Uh, Are those well, how about those oh, baby needs right there? Yeah, it's that's Louisiana. Wine. Louisiana, come I'm on. I'm just saying, but sometimes that kid is not going to sleep by itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, that's what exactly. happens. Mama's so little helper. It is easy to find ghosts. <laughs> but my point is that there, uh, yeah. when we were having breakfast, I mean, that was all the talk the next morning was, you know, I saw a ghost. Did you see a ghost? Did you see a ghost in your room? So that's what everyone was, was talking about. Um, but it's... Right, and and the general store. Um, now there was a fire the, there uh, in two thousand and fourteen. Okay. Yeah, this is the, the general store system. right here. Okay. Right, right. So, oh my God, it's <laughs> he's doing a good Chloe. job of it. Um, but uh, yeah, so the house is here. <laughs> the house is here, and the the general store is right okay. here. And it's also where you can go and have your breakfast. I, but yeah, there was a, a fire there in two thousand and fourteen, uh, and I think it was I, I damaged beyond repair and. I think they've had to go and replace sections of it, but the main house fortunately wasn't damaged at all. Yeah. It, um, it's the fact that they're all having that, that conversation at breakfast says to me that the, the plantation is doing a good job of selling itself as a haunted location because clearly those people were all there to have an experience. Um, maybe not, wasn't the frogs and the crickets, yes. but the ghost oh, hunters yeah, had yeah. a good and night, whether you did I or think, not, it's another story, but they had a good time. <laughs> Yeah, we, we've. Now, we were lucky enough to be there um, during the time of uh, the, this one woman who had been there for decades and she conducted a lot of the tours. She is kind of the purveyor of me of the stories. You'll always see her on, you know, the, the, the TV oh, shows Mr. that talk e. about her, her name Good is name. Hester. And uh, yeah, and, and we were lucky enough to to get to to hang out with Hester and everything. And she she's is delightful, charming. And I'm not sure of. Yeah, absolutely delightful woman. But boy, she was invested in the stories, whether she believed them or not. She was invested because, I, you know, I'm sure uh, some of that money came back to her. Uh, the better right. she did. as a Oh, yeah. And her but her time. Person. Her but, time, uh, her tenure goes back to the, the 1980s, which is around the time of the Myers family when the the Myrtles plantation story really broke. And uh, so a lot of those top 10 haunted houses in America lists started coming out around that time too, and the Myrtles was you know, invariably on that list. Um, but I think it's been our experience over the years and other places that we've gone to as well that it doesn't matter what room you stay in, it is the most haunted room. Right. So it seems to be the case wherever you go and, uh, you know, people will actually turn up to these places and say, can I have the haunted room? Right. Oh, sure. Yes, it happens to be free. Someone just cancelled, whatever. But every room is the most haunted. I mean, if I'm and going to go someplace as I know that it's haunted, I, I want to stay in the haunted room too because I am always looking to try to have some kind of experience and I've yet to have one. But if I'm going to go to a haunted B&B, &B, I want to be in the haunted room. 
mean, that's 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 what I'm paying for, you know. Exactly. That will be yeah, the room yeah. that was vacant. Whichever one. Uh, so that's, and, and, you know, we know that from uh, the, the haunted Brown Palace in Denver, oh. uh, depending on what night you go there. Don't they understand depend on that people like are repeat customers? Uh, <laughs> well, that, like they like sure. to give them a yeah, different oh, well, experience. The ghost um, moved rooms. So, so th- oh. that's perfectly fine. They but, can go through walls. So exactly. Exactly. That, I mean, indeed, that, yeah. Yeah. Bingo. Bingo. Now, um, so it, it is interesting that the the Myrtle's plantation seems to rely on the 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 uh, confirmation of the <laughs> Smithsonian so much in in the story that uh, we do have this wonderful quote I that I think you will really appreciate. Um, this is uh, <laughs> this is a uh, uh, you know Karen sent the query <laughs> to the Smithsonian. And uh, we got the uh, reply yep, from yeah, Barbara, Barbara McBride nice of the Smith- Smithsonian. <laughs> there you go. Small oh, world. Great, great. And, and she says, the Smithsonian, the Smithsonian does not maintain a list of haunted houses, nor does it authenticate photographs of ghosts. That's so nice. there you go. Did you, did you then it's ask her where all quote. the giants were? Because I feel like that was what she was expecting next. <laughs> where are the giants, the Barbara? Next question, yes. <laughs> uh, we know we've they seen exist. pictures of the skulls <laughs> yeah. uh, mm-hmm. but that's that's pretty much the story really i i think that uh it's a beautiful place to go to it's a, a lovely little town there's a lot of history there it's truly buried underneath all of the folklore uh, but it it's absolutely worth a visit and it's nice i think to to stay there just to be able to support a place like this uh and you know, to support it uh, being maintained because these places are just so expensive to run. They are. Um, but yeah. you, you really want to take all the ghost stories with a grain of salt. I I like that this bed and breakfast. Yep. Yeah. Ah, peacocks. peacocks are great until they get uppity. Um, <laughs> we we worked at a site <laughs> this one, one was time, a bit uppity. And the house that the property belonged to was way up on a hill and they had peacocks. And every day when we would lug our, all of our equipment into setup, it would just be from like the moment we got there until the moment we left that the peacocks hated us and it would just be, ah, ah, and I was like, God, <laughs> yeah. anyway, and that's on camera now. So, woo. um, <laughs> beautiful to look at <laughs> no editing that out. You Things you don't get to see when it's just my voice. Um, I like that they <laughs> made a living and, and have salvaged that plantation by making it a haunted property, whether it is or not. Um, yeah. And I well, like unlike other ones in the area. There, yeah. And I, and I like that the culture is there to support that um, because it shows a shift in, to put my anthropology, archaeology hat on, it, it shows the shift in, in space use and, and how that's being utilized going from, this is a home, you know, a business, a home, to mm-hmm. you know now that now it's an experience now you can come here and have an experience and apparently meet oh, people yeah. in the dead a of restaurant night. and a gift shop you know and and that's the really tough part i think for us because karen and i love the folklore we love the stories mm-hmm. we love all of that it's so much fun but we also really love mm-hmm. history and accurate real history so where where do you draw the line? Because they have destroyed the history, uh, but they have a lot of fun stories, you know. So it's it's a little more Disneyland and a little less uh, well, historical. They, but you're right. Uh, I mean, there location. is so much so. fun history there, from you know David Bradford and the the Whiskey Rebellion right. uh, through to just the the people who lived there and their life experiences and their stories and their narratives. Yeah. Uh, and so it is. Well, well, even Woodruff. I mean, he. Uh, is 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 now labeled as this horrible philanderer, uh, and <clears throat> it seemed like he was a really great faithful well, guy. I mean, uh, when his, it, it, it almost is a pity when people get this bad label right. because this. Well, when his wife uh, and children died, uh, he left with his mother-in-law Elizabeth. She was still there, oh. uh, and they left with the uh, the other daughter Mary. And I can't remember where they moved to, but they they moved somewhere else. So it seems like his life was pretty quiet and pretty innocuous. Uh, and yet he's yeah really burdened with all of this baggage, uh, being this well, this that, 
Well, that's why terrible plantation owner and, that's and that's master why he's and in the place because like he's picked about his he wants justice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tired of the BS, just that's like that, Eric that, that's the handprint in the mirror. It's him, like God, come story. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, whatever way you you want to look at it, it's absolutely worth a visit. Yeah, and, uh, just a truly remarkable place. Just don't go in summer. Well, May isn't <gasps> summer. Well, you don't go yeah. in May or spring it is there. or. Yeah, that's the. Uh, I hate going, yeah, going in the south because maybe. everything it's always hot. It doesn't matter what time of year. It <sighs> it's always hot. It's always muggy, and everything there is trying to kill you. Like if it isn't, I mean, everything there is trying to kill you. The plants are poisonous. The the bugs are poisonous. The snakes and the lizards and the animals are poisonous. Spanish moss, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, everything's everything's just trying to kill you there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Chicas, yeah, that's what. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. now that we're yeah. all itchy, we're feeling tugs on our clothing now because clearly it's ghosts. That's... Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both. Hearing hearing nursery rhymes, no. things sung oh, in the background. Oh, is that what they hear? They hear Norse. The impatient kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, we didn't even talk about the old caretaker who would run out and tell, try to scare people off, and and you know, in the white Did overalls. Did the Scooby Gang come and unmask that? Or, or, no. I saw that episode. <laughs> they should have. Well, yeah, no, this, uh, I think he was there in the 1920s, but he, uh, he still to this day runs out and, and screams at people about why they're there because get off my lawn, I guess. The 20s. Wait, um, so his ghost get comes get off my out lawn and kind of tries thing, to yeah. run people. Okay. Um, I was like, or is it yes. like a 90 year old dude who's just yes. like running after people? Get off my lawn. <laughs> out, out that way it's hard to tell <laughs> but suffice to say we we didn't see yeah, anything it is. and it is. Uh, i mean we're, we're joking about a lot of things but we do try to keep open minds and um we we certainly have had paranormal like experiences ourselves we haven't seen anything definitively definitively paranormal um but yeah we we for all of the stories and all of the other people there experiencing things and the, the hundreds of sightings that people have had, we didn't experience anything ourselves, sadly. Right. And, and you know, it, it's a, that area in Louisiana can be a little bit of a culture shock um, if uh, you're not from there. But it, it really was the, so many great memories and it's really lovely. Uh, you know, we keep talking about how we want to take our, our son Blade down there and, and uh, just show him around because it is I mean, a, a wonderful experience. It's a whole other, so, uh, people uh, forget that about it. the America, the country. It's like it's, it's such a large space. You really can mm-hmm. suffer quite a bit of culture shock moving from just like two states across the country. So, Oh, uh, like, absolutely, especially for me coming yeah. from another country. Uh, but people are really friendly there. You still have that southern house hospitality yeah. and friendliness and um, you know, I see some kind of similarities between, I think, the South and Australia too. Just very, uh, yeah, so maybe, to maybe that you. too. <laughs> just very friendly, down to earth people, and uh, who love to tell a good story. Don't we? But we all love the story. That's it's the story that's important. You know, it's unfortunate like the the history is getting lost in the stories. But at the same time, they, it sounds like it's not impossible to find the actual history of the the plantation. So, got to dig for it a little bit. But we're trying to and keep that alive. If you want to, yep, just that's yeah, hop true. onto Amazon and buy Haunted America. Haunted, haunted, haunted America. We're haunted America slowly be... working our way through this book. One one chapter. We are. Time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys. But not. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, we're not short of stories. No. It's just a few. <laughs> no, I like it because I like having you come on and like expand on the stories because I, I, I remember you saying that the book was like originally just kind of a kind of an introduction, introductory thing. And so now you can yeah. like, add all of the details in that you didn't have space for originally. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and just, I mean, there's so many stories across the country and across the world and uh, yep. yeah, hopefully we can keep exploring them all. It's good fun. Yes. Thank you both for coming on. I truly appreciate it. I, I'm loving the, the Halloween dude in the background. I just can't. Like, He's precious. So I love him and I want him in my house. Um, and thank you guys. This is our favorite time of year. <laughs> yes. And thank you for with the video thing with me. Um, we only had one major hiccup, so. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sure it'll turn out well. We look forward to looking at the results. And um, yeah, we love talking to you anytime. All right. Talk to you guys. Thanks, Sarah. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>